Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of AmiBroker video tutorials. Thank you so much for joining me. This is a really cool one and a really quick one. I just wanted to show you what the actual effects of a buy and hold strategy really are. Because so many times, you know, you hear these talking heads on television, they talk about, you know, well, a buy and hold strategy, you know, stocks in general outperform this and outperform that and they make 12% per annum and, and, you know, this sort of thing on a regular basis, averaged out or whatever it is that they say. You know, they make some pretty crazy accusations. Let's actually go back and get the numbers using this incredible program. I just absolutely love it to bits. Ami Broker, very simple stuff. And I'm just going to show you how. And also the results will completely surprise you. I guarantee it. It is definitely not what I expected. Um, so a buy and hold strategy. And look, I'm going to use the Australian index. I apologize in advance for, for um, anyone else in, you know, using other, other indices or other universes of stocks. Um, but, you know, it's going to be very similar for, for pretty much anywhere you trade. Um, these results will definitely reflect very similarly, I think. So all I'm going to do, I've got the All Ordinaries, which is just the, the main index down under Australia, and I'm looking at the current symbol, and I want to backtest it from 2000 to 2015. Now, all, all I've set up here is this little bit. It's just buy equals true and a semicolon, and then for the sell, it's just sell equals false and a semicolon to end that one as well. So all that means is that um, that buy equals true as soon as there's a price basically it's going to buy and when there's no longer a price then it's just going to stop so it's going to sell. Really easy way to do it. Uh, we'll just save that and bump that out and we'll do a, just a really quick t back test on the all ordinaries and if we report on that it gives us the details. So basically we're looking at around a 3% annual return if you had something that tracked the market uh, in, in Australia. Now I did do the S&P 500, uh, it actually works out a little bit less. So you're looking at about 2% per annum overall um, if you had invested in the S&P 500 in America. So, you know, that's, a, that's one easy way to do it. But let's take this to the next level because what we can actually do is instead of just looking at our all ordinaries, what if we had actually bought and hold a basket of 20 stocks? And you know what? No one is going to buy the same um, 20 stocks, so people might buy different ones. You know, no two, two traders are the same in a lot of ways. So if we're looking at the ASX 200, um, including delisted stocks as well. So, you know, just making sure that we're including all of those delisted stocks um, that have disappeared over time so that we've got an accurate representation. If we use that as our universe and we still back test from 2000 to 2015, now in our code, I'm just going to uncomment these little sections here. Basically, this one is our position sizing. So we've got, I've done this in another video as well. Check it out. We've just got 20 positions and our position size is 5% of our total equity in each position. So, you know, pretty simple stuff there. Now, I'm also going to uncomment the, uh, the Monte Carlo code, which we covered in another video, which is absolutely fantastic. And all this says is um, our position score, instead of being A, B, C, D, E, F, G, taking, taking stocks, um, it's going to be random. So it might be, you know, all over the place. And it's going to multiply that by a thousand different runs. So it'll run it a thousand times. So that'll give us a thousand random versions of a 20 stock portfolio. So this is the best thing. And yes, we do want to save that. Absolutely. And instead of clicking back test, we just click optimize and gives us a bit of a warning there. And that will actually work its magic and show us the range of results that we could get if we bought many different baskets of 20 stock portfolios over the last 15 years. So just fast forwarding a little bit, it, it only took a few minutes to do. And, uh, and looking at that, all we have to do is click file and export. And we just want to export that as our CSV file. I've already done that and I've already saved it as the XLSX, like the Excel file as well. So I'm just going to open that up. Now I did cover all of this in another video as well, just how to do a Monte Carlo test and also how to how to analyze those results. But these this is absolutely, you're going to love this. 
these this is our data here basically whoop really quickly this is all our raw data so it doesn't look like much initially until we turn it into something so taking all of those results this is our compound annual return and I've, we can actually simplify this even more it's got one decimal point um, but that's basically it there I'll just make it a little bit bigger so it goes from 8% per annum through to 16% per annum and obviously you can see it's got two two peaks there what you might call a binomial distribution or something similar if you were to to look at it from a statistician's point of view um, you know which which we should be doing so we've got two peaks there basically there are two two major points so we've got about 10% per annum there and 13% per annum here and um, so if we were to, to do a buy and hold strategy a lot of the time we might actually get around 10% or 13%. However, we could also get 8% um, or up to 15 or 16%, which is pretty cool. The only other thing that we want to look at is the, uh, is the maximum drawdown as well. So this is the compound annual return over the maximum drawdown and it's just in a scatter plot. So something really, really you know, easy to do. I've done this in another video just to show you as well how to do it. But this is the result from our buy and hold. And as you can see, this is our annual return from 8% through to 16%. But our maximum drawdown, all really, really close together. Um, I, I don't think any buy and hold system escaped less than a 60% drawdown. So between 60 and 80% was the, the usual drawdown for a buy and hold system. So in other words, if, you're a, if you are a buy and hold investor, you could expect 8% per annum quite reasonably, extremely respectably, um, but you would have to stomach a 60 to 80% drawdown at some point in your trading lifetime as well. So as long as you can do that, then a buy and hold might indeed be for you. In, in fact, it'd be a lot easier and you could still get away with around 12% returns. So that is the actual truth. That's the, that's the actual statistics and the numbers on a real buy and hold strategy. Um, a thousand different portfolios over the last 15 years. How cool is that? Guys, I hope this has helped in some small way. Drop by the website, it's asxmarketwatch.com. Heaps more videos there for you as well. Um, absolutely fantastic stuff. Happy trending until we meet again. And bye for now.